Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Crusher. I'm your host, Josh Brewster, and I'm here with the lovely and talented Susan Olson, the great one herself. How are you, Susan? I'm good, thank you. Good, good to be with you again. Uh, you know, it's another action-packed week around the world. We have lots to talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk about the United Kingdom because that's been uh, pretty much a shit show uh, this week. So why don't you start us off with your thoughts about what's been going on there with regard to freedom of speech and jailing people for social media posts? Um, you know, the fascists have risen. Uh, the, the brown shirts are alive and well in, in England. Um, it's very concerning to me because I think it's a cautionary tale very much. Um, well, let me start. Let me just interrupt. Let's, let's describe what we're talking about. There's a gentleman who was sentenced to 20 months in prison for what was his, what was he, he was like, who, who the F is Allah or something, or he wrote, was that what it was or something that, like this? Yes. But there's yes, a number of cases. That, that I'm not even familiar with just because I've been aware of Tommy Robinson for <laughs> probably going on 20 years and, and the basic pro the migrant problem in, in England, which is a cultural problem and it's not anything that's xenophobic or racist or it, it's just, you can have two cultures that do not belong together. And that's what you have in England. And um, when you, when a, a certain political faction, which, okay, as we all know, I believe the far left is colluding with Islam to, you know, for Islam to do their dirty work. I call it Islamianism. And it's, it's clear to me because the far left, who basically want to destroy the West, are using Islam to do so. And I know this because when it comes to just basic common sense it make it makes no sense that the law is continuously on the side of the perpetrators the british people the indigenous people of england and we only care about indigenous people um if they're not white right. yeah when we had indigenous people day um instead of thanksgiving i wrote on social media okay i hope they're celebrating this in europe Anyway, so we have this migration situation that I believe is constructed to destroy the, the West. And the people have been very patient and very kind. And part of that is just because if they raise their hand to speak up and say, hey, I don't like the way this group is behaving in such a lawless manner and has this tendency to rape our women. Um, then they're called racist and xenophobic, and, and fa fascist. unfortunately, that's yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, and fascist is the most popular term in England. It always has been. It describes anyone um, to the to the center or the right. Uh, even people in the center are fascist there. But you mentioned a name, Tommy Robinson. Tell the audience who that is. Okay, Tommy Robinson is a man who kind of single handedly has spearheaded the. Working classes um, revolt from from this. Now imagine you have a neighborhood, these migrants come in and they don't assimilate. And, you know, kind of through no fault of their own, they come from a culture where if a woman is not covered from head to toe, she is asking to be raped. And they do rape. Um They've taken advantage of the system and uh, tend to not work. And this is not all of the migrants. You know, there are also people that come for better opportunities and they fit in and they're nice. And this is not about them. This is about the ones who do not want to assimilate. There is a 1,400-year history of Islam intending to conquer the world and so this is part of their attempt to, to conquer so they don't assimilate and they have created a very bad situation because to live in. because they are allowed to not assimilate right um, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna jump in do another one of my high-tech 
presentations here. This has been my book this week. Okay, this is this oh, is Victor Davis Hanson. Yeah. I, I is, love him. This is the Dying Citizen by Victor Davis yeah. Hanson. This came out in 2021, and um, look, you you use the word migrant. You we've gone from illegal alien to dropping the illegal and just calling them immigrants so that we blur the line between immigrants and Ill- illegal well, immigrants. I don't. Which, no, 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 I understand. And then, we, and then we're on to the word migrant as though in this world, uh, you're just, you know, people just move, man. They just move. And here they are now. And being a, um, being a citizen does not have value. A citizen has responsibilities. Uh, a, a a person who's just a resident does not. And then, as we've discussed, when people, as you mentioned, assimilation, when they're not asked to assimilate, this becomes a big problem. It also becomes a big problem when the social welfare state has to give to people who are not contributing because they are not citizens. The death of democracy, as the left in this country likes to talk about all the time, comes from the erosion of citizenship. When citizenship does not make any, any any difference anymore, which it doesn't, and you're giving you're giving your welfare state to the people who have not paid in and and don't have any responsibilities here, that's how democracy dies. And yeah, um, so you can't so, afford but, it. Okay, so now in England there are people who are being jailed, literally jailed, like twenty months for social media posts. When there's mm-hmm. people out there screaming about, uh, you know, kill the Jews, death to Israel, we hate the West, whatever. Yeah, that and that's fine. And they're jailing them. You know, it's funny, Susan, you're old enough to remember this. And by the way, happy birthday to you. I know you had a, oh, a birthday you. this week. Okay. You know, God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols was, a, was a, taken off the charts in England. And, you know, I always growing up thought, you know, it's interesting. We have a First Amendment. They don't. And a lot of Americans, a lot of Americans don't recognize it. You know, you can talk about freedom of speech. You can even put it in your constitution. But unless you have an actual First Amendment style prohibition on Congress shall pass no law, uh, you know, uh, you don't have freedom of speech. And now you've got people being jailed, jailed in England for saying things they're well within their rights to say. You don't, you know, and. And so on your note of assimilation, what, what we're witnessing in England is the absolute refusal of the larger society to insist on e pluribus unum, to insist on you come here, you become a, a, an Englishman. You know what I mean? You, we, don't become, yeah. we don't become you. We don't become jihad land. You become an Englishman. Exactly. And of course, you know, this is part of their philosophy is to come in and bring their ways and, you know, to enforce Sharia. But it is up to the host country to say, no, you want to be here. You accept our laws and even to some extent our culture. Sure. Bring in your cultural things. That's wonderful. That's that's one of the reasons why we like legal immigration. But um, when you come in imposing your own system, it doesn't work. And you cannot have open borders and a welfare state. You no. can't. No, you can't. You cannot afford nope. it. There's nobody paying into what's going out. No, absolutely. Milton Friedman won the Nobel Prize and said that. And, of course, he's not taught. Uh, he, they don't teach him in, in our, in our uh, academies. Yeah. They, they don't teach him. They teach Karl Marx. That's who they teach. They teach well, people and they like teach that Friedman is is um you know was a racist. He's a deplorable. He's a deplorable. Yeah. racist. Yeah. You know, just and, and in and of itself. Yeah. No. It's it, it's it's insane, and 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 we are insane, and we are moving back to uh, back to blood, as Tom Wolfe wrote in one in his last novel. We're moving back to blood. We're moving back to tribalism. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson in this book, he points out. He says, you know. Um, Bernie Sanders likes to point out that at the University of Chicago, way back 60 whatever years ago in his day, he was part of the effort to integrate the uh, campus housing or something like this, or on off campus housing, whatever the hell it was. But now, the left, including Bernie Sanders, is very much in favor of segregating yes. the housing at at our college campuses. They're in mm-hmm. favor of segregated graduations. It's yes. utterly unbelievable. The tribalism that we're pursuing now, that you could have a left 
that was so worried about integration and now is actually championing segregation. It's segregation with a smiley face, Susan. It, it's, you know, they call themselves progressive and it's nothing but regressive. Um, the liberals are illiberal. Yeah. And it doesn't even go along with what they claim is their, their plan unless the segregation is just to make sure that the citizens of the country are treat, treated less well. If, yeah. if you're a citizen, if you obey the law, you get the shaft. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is happening not because it really makes any sense in, in even Karl Marx's mind. It's happening just to create dissent. It is, it is happening to make people angry and upset so that they'll do things like have riots in England. And then the authorities can go, uh, uh, oh no, now we have to jail you for creating, you know, this, this mayhem when they're creating mayhem because nobody's listening to them. The King Dumbo, Charles, Thanked the um, care stammer stammer the, the the PM of England for creating a peace by jailing the people of his country. Um, Tommy Robinson, who is like the, the voice of the people, and I've often thought of him as being kind of a you know, kind of a muckraker. You know, he does do the the poo poo. A bit, and yet now I'm I'm seeing that no, that that's necessary. He's been doing this. He needs to do it. The people need to have a voice, and he tried desperately to have it be a peaceful movement, peaceful let's be heard movement, and it turned into their January sixth, where well, the people who were were um, violent were the ones that got off scot free. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bad situation in England, and we'll uh, continue to monitor that. Uh, you know, we're just there, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, California here in the United States. You know, what uh, California is basically like Canada, and we're going to export the rest of this nonsense to America. And it seems like America is just a couple steps behind England in caving to all of this nonsense. And um, speaking of caving to all this nonsense, I wanted to ask you about uh, Kamala Harris's grand new plan for the economy. Uh, folks, if you haven't learned now, if you haven't lived long enough to learn, never, ever trust the left regarding the economy. Never, <laughs> never, ever, ever. Um, which is why I make a distinction. Look, uh, Bill Clinton was was much more of a centrist. He was an actual Democrat. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the left, the people who changed it from socialists to we'll call ourselves liberals. And then when they got sick of using the word liberal, they decided to use the word progressive. It's all the same socialist nonsense. So now here comes Kamala Harris, Santa Claus with the goodies. She's going to offer America. First of all, she says she's going to build three million homes. Should be interesting to see her get out there with a hammer and, and a set of nails to do that. And then secondly, she says now that she is going to give $25,000 to first time home buyers. Okay. And $6,000 uh, child credit, uh, whatever. So she's doing the Santa Claus Obama routine. And Susan, I, I hate to tell you this. Um, it will work. It will work. Santa Claus will work. It, it'll, it, it's, it works. Well, you know, I, I am afraid of that, too. I think that there are enough stupid people in this country yep. that they will vote for her, that they will believe all of the crap that she's saying. In the first place, she'll make promises that she has no intentions of keeping. In the second place, she'll make promises that she has no idea what they mean. Because she doesn't know anything. She but doesn't Susan, know if, if, she, if she delivers on those, it'll just make inflation worse. But what I'm suggesting here is the 30 seconds worth of thinking about how economics works is not going to take place in the heads of these people. They're just going to vote for her because she makes them feel good. And then she gets up and she says, oh, I'm going to have we're going to have price controls. And, and again, if you just sit for 30 seconds, that's a socialist measure. People are so they are so stupid. That's a socialist measure. Ralph's and Kroger and Albertsons and all the, they would love to charge you less. I know the people don't believe this. They are not gouging you. They would love to charge you less. Inflation is what it is, but it might take you 30 seconds to think of what inflation is. 
So since you don't have time for that, oh, she's so right. We're being gouged by the big bad guys. They're, they, and she, they, she can't even say gouged. She says gauged. They would love to charge you less. If store A charges you a buck and store B makes it 49 cents, people go to store B. But that might take you 10 seconds to think. And instead, you're not going to think. You're going to say, oh, she makes me feel good. And uh, I'm going to pull the lever for her. And the big bad guys are the corporations. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, corporations I, you know. can be big bad guys. And corporations undoubtedly run this country. But... That is not what causes inflation. Inflation is caused by the government, by too much government and government spending and government printing money and, and, and thin air. And she was part of the administration that brought it to us. She yes, was the she vice was. president. And uh, there you go. Yeah. And the and you have the uh, the the open border and all the other stuff that, that uh, you know, she's I, she's going to she has no nothing but failure to show. Uh, but now here come the good vibes, and I. I'm, oh, but I'm, she's pretty. You know, pretty. she wears a nice pants suit. She's a she. She's pretty, and she's not white. There you go. Uh huh. She makes yeah, me feel that's good. Yeah, that's all. That's all they need. She makes me feel good. Um, just remember, people. Whenever the government says they're going to give you something, there is a huge price, a huge price attached to it. And the Democrat Party is not the Democrat Party anymore. No, no. Think of the Democrat Party as a dog that you've loved and that's always been by your side and you really like it, but now it has rabies. It's diseased and it will kill you. You're, you're going to have to, I'm sorry, you love the dog, but you're going to have to put it down because it's going to kill you. Well put. And speaking of it's going to kill you, Susan, here we are in Hollywood land and, um, the very sad case of Matthew Perry, star of Friends, uh, you know, and, and I, look, I, I, I bring this up all, almost never with you, but you know what it means to be a, a star of a big TV show, an iconic television mm -hmm. show. And uh, here's a guy who struggled with addiction. And now there's five people in his circle uh, who are being brought up on federal charges. Uh, evidently, he was using a drug called ketamine. Yes. I, I know absolutely no, I know that's the special K. I know nothing about yeah. it. I'm glad that one never came that's my way. That's a street name. We <clears throat> yeah. use it with um, in animal rescue. We use it to put cats to sleep. Jesus. So this is what he was ingesting. And there's a woman who goes by the moniker Ketamine Queen. And his assistant was shooting him up. Uh, and they were all laughing about how much they were charging him. Boy, what a sad, sad story, Susan, uh, this yeah. Matthew Perry thing. What do you think about this? Um, well, I think that, that there are so many parallel stories out there, people that we never hear about. And rather than ketamine, it's um, fentanyl, which it, just for, I guess, mean-spiritedness, they're putting it in everything. Yeah. So somebody who's just a dabbler, who doesn't have a drug problem, who doesn't have assistance shooting them up, could get some Coke just for, you know, hey, we're going to this concert tonight. Let's have some Coke. I come from an era where that was a common thing to do. Hey, it's prom night. Let's get an eight ball. Um, yeah. 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 And, and they're dying from, you know, just very casual usage. It, one line will kill you. Um, you know, it's... Maybe it's a good thing that now you can really say to the kids, don't touch anything because it it all will kill you. It can kill you. Uh, we have a terrible drug problem going on in this country. And a lot of people who don't have celebrity names are dying. Yeah, well, you know, and also it's... um. It's a poisoning problem. It's not even an overdose problem because no one no. really, no, there's not that many people who intend to take it. Now, I have heard of people, um, I have heard of people talking about that they were on fentanyl. I don't know how mm -hmm. the hell, I don't know why the hell you would dabble with that. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they, um, it's a poisoning. And uh, I'll remind the audience again, you look it up. Uh, the fact is, it's from China. All the ingredients are from China. They are sent to, the cartels in Mexico, they synthesize it, they send it to the U.S. Um, to kill us. 
So how they ever became, how they're still considered an ally, I have no idea. They're the worst. They're a terrible neighbor. Um, and sorry, they let caravans of people walk across their country and into our country. And somehow they're our buddies. I, I have no idea well, how this works. Why? Have no because idea. Because the people running the show want the caravans. They want the destruction yeah. of this country. And if you're going to vote for the left, you're voting for your own demise. Yeah, and 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 Susan, we may uh, we may be there already. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you talk about predictions of the future. You know, you when you've when you've had you know people say 11 million uh, before Biden got elected, and and there's a lot of people who say, in fact, I think it was Yale and MIT that did a study that it probably is at least double that before they got elected. Now you add like 10, now you, yeah now you add but now you add 10 million more. And, you know, again, they, they're successfully pointing to the Republicans saying, well, Congress, Congress doesn't want to help us. No, Congress didn't want to approve 5,000 illegals a day. That's what they didn't want to approve of. OK, and I don't blame them. So here we are. And um, you got a housing crisis. You imported 10 million. You got no ID to vote. You imported 10 million. Um, plus fentanyl, and we we are in very big trouble. It's not we're going to be in trouble. It's we are in trouble. Not we're going to we be are. in trouble. We are right now. And um, so, you know, you go vote for Santa Claus if you want, but uh, I'm not going along. Well, and, you know, Santa Claus is really Krampus. Um, I, I still have this little bit of hope that even if – because – Basically, let's face it, Kamala gets in, we're done. Our goose is cooked. But I have this tiny bit of hope that maybe it would be so obvious that people will do something. I don't know, Susan. That. I think we're already there. I, I'm telling you, I think yeah. we're already there. You got it. Come on. You got it already. I mean, gas doubles in price. Inflation's through the roof. The it, There's so many things that have, the border is wide open. There's so many things wrong. And by People the way. People are in prison without due by process. By the way, by the way, I want to say this. You know, my son's going to Israel in September. Got a lot of hesitations about this, but, oh, gosh. but, but, but at the same time, now stop and think about something. You know, there's people who really believe that one of the reasons Iran has not uncorked um, a major attack on Israel again is that they don't want to jeopardize Kamala Harris's election and that they want a nice soft, they want the soft to continue. And once they know that the softness will continue, then they will really be free to unload. They hear what she says about uh, how much she hates Netanyahu. They see that she put this anti-Israel Jewish guy as the liaison between the Jewish community and the administration, uh, the if it's her administration. And they do not want to see Trump because Trump will get serious with them. Uh, he, was, right. he was serious with them. So th there are people who are saying they're laying low until they can mm -hmm. see Kamala yes. Harris get elected. And, um, you know, yeah, I, I got to go, I got to, I got to say, I'm going along with that, Susan. Oh yeah. I, I completely believe that because having studied Islam, that is part of the strategy. You play along, you play nice until you really have the upper hand. And they've been doing this for 1400 years. This goes way back, way before Israel. Oh. And remember that Israel is the little Satan and America is the big Satan. Yep. And if they conquer Israel, everybody can say, oh, well, Israel shouldn't even exist. And, and um, yeah, it is, it isn't a great location for a Jewish nation, but it is their land and it is their holy ground. It's their history. And, um, and but they are the canary in the coal mine. Yep. Islam, Israel goes down, we're going down. Yep. I mean, the the way that that would embolden the Uma is beyond belief. Yes, it is. And uh, you know, they they see all the they see, look. They see the pictures of Tim Waltz with Ilan Omar, and they see you know that he's uh, allied with you know, people who support Hamas and, uh, he's, oh, yeah. he's, he's just wonderful. Let me tell you. Um, so anyway, listen, before we finish up, do you have any final thoughts on the Olympics? I completely failed to watch any of it. Um, I don't know if you had any final <laughs> thoughts about it cause I didn't see any of it. Um, I, of course I watched the gymnastics, <laughs> um, tried to find what I could, you know, the nice thing is with streaming, 
for the first time, I could actually tune in and select the equestrian events, which they never cover properly <laughs> because there's only like five people like me that want to watch the equestrian events. Um, so I was able to see those. And um, interesting that they're covering horses ears these days. But, um, you know, gymnastics was great. Uh, the fact that we are, that they, the Olympics did allow men, biological men, to compete against women really pissed me off. But we've had a victory. Um, Title IX has been preserved. Yeah, the Supreme Court came out with a 5-4 decision. Why don't you tell us about that? Uh, I hadn't read into it, but I, I know it's, uh, it's very important. Well, the, um, the lefties, in their infinite wisdom, were rewriting Title IX. Title IX right. is what gave women women's sports. It was fought right. for long and hard. Talk about feminism. Talk about women's rights. Title IX was very important. And here come the lefties saying they wanted to rewrite it, claiming that men, biological men right. who right. identify right. as women, can compete in, in women's sports. I'm sorry. If you decide to get a sex change, you don't yeah. get yeah, to I got be you. a star athlete unless they have a special, uh, you know, tranny Olympics yeah. or it, it trans is, Susan, it, it is, it's the dividing line between equity feminism and gender feminism. Uh, it, it's what feminism should be is Title IX. And what yes. we have now is batshit, yes. batshit nonsense. Uh, right. I mean, and, this is and, the it's, and it's crapping all over women. I mean, <clears throat> yep. these women that claim claim to be feminists. I, it, it, it's it's a stupid. Remember when they're all running around with their pussy hats, and they were being led by Linda Sarsour. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I told Gloria Steinem in the Brady Bunch backyard. I had I had an actual nice conversation with her, and I will always respect her because. She she knew we were on opposite ends, but she did speak to me. And I said, you know, I, I'm sorry I can't get behind a women's movement that would have a, a march led by Linda Sarsour. What did that she say? That is the zenith of What did she it. say? She said, oh, you'd really like her. She's I, really nice. Stop. I said, I don't care if she's nice. Then stop she told me, stop she tried it. to tell me oh my God. that the prophet... The prophet of Islam, oh, the prophet God. was a feminist because his his wife was was a business person. She did everything. It's like, boy, by that standard, both of my husbands were real feminists because they let me be the breadwinner too. Um, yeah, the prophet <laughs> lived off of his first wife, and then wow. I said to her, "Yeah, but you know, what about the subsequent wives? I mean, people aren't even aware that he had a Jewish wife." What about Sophia? Of course, she didn't know who that and was. And I wonder, you know, when I hear something like that coming out of the mouth of Gloria Steinem, uh, I I stop wondering why so many atrocities toward women, um, including what happened in Israel on the seventh of on the seventh of October, and also happens in Africa to young women being sold off the back of trucks, and the women's movement in this country doesn't say a damn thing. Not a but damn it, it's, thing. It, and and she was saying how. I would love Hillary um, and that, you know, oh, well, you know, Trump says he could grab women by the hoo-ha. And I'm like, that, you know, that's nowhere near as offensive as Hillary laughing at a man being sodomized with a bayonet. And she said, well, you'd love her. I said, I'm, I'm afraid the people of Libya would beg to differ. I don't think they love her. And because of Hillary, we have women being sold as sex slaves because she ordered the, the the assassination of Gaddafi, and Libya went from being the richest country in Africa to being a poop hole, where they sell women at the on the corner for sex. All right. All right. Well, then it's time for our favorite segment. Tribute to stupidity. <laughs> Time Magazine for revealing themselves as being a comic book designed only for the stupid. Um, they feature on the cover Kamila. Um, and, and there isn't even an article 
about her inside because she wouldn't sit down for an interview because she can't speak. So they have window dressing. Her this moment. Is, it says her moment. Let it only be a moment and let that moment have passed. Meanwhile, they took down the cover of Trump saying fight, fight, fight after he was nearly assassinated. Gee, I wonder whose side they might be on. Okay, you people are stupid because you made yourselves so obvious, so obvious which side you're on. And um, I say anybody who is even in the center should never buy another copy of Time magazine ever again. All right. Well, it's another great episode of The Crusher. Susan, uh, you are right on the mark. Time Magazine, screw you. And uh, we will be back for more hilarity next week. Thank you, Susan. Thank you.